morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you're watching us from. Welcome to Mavuno Church Online. Yeah. And as you can see from the set behind us and from the wonderful music that the band is playing, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> it is December, Christmas is upon us, and we get to celebrate our Savior who came to, to redeem us and draw us close to the Father. And this is a special time for anybody who is a believer and even for everybody in the world because there's so much joy and festivity. So I want to invite you to open your heart to receive the joy that God has for you in this season. Wherever it is you are, get ready to praise and to worship this great and awesome God. Father, thank you so much for this time of the year that we get to reflect on the sacrifice that you gave us through your son. You spared no expense, oh God, that we could be close to you. So Lord, our response today is to worship you and to draw near to you because you have given us such a valuable gift. In Jesus' name, we have just begun in praise and worship and all God's people said, yeah. Amen. Our God is indeed awesome. Yeah. There is none like him. So put your hands together, everybody, like so. side to side. I know you know this song. It declares that our God is awesome. He is indeed.
son like our God. In the heavens, in the earth, under the earth, there is no one like you, O oh God. We worship you for who you are. We have such a loving God. Even in his love and his grace and in his mercy, there is no one like him. The Bible puts it this way in the book of Micah, chapter 7, and verse 18. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but you delight to show mercy. Verse 19, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. There is no one like our God who spared no expense that you and I could have fellowship with him, that you and I can be reconciled to him. And this is the meaning of Christmas. So would you join us as we worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the King who came so that you and I could have a relationship with him, the King who loves us absolutely. King of Kings, yes, you are Jesus.
forever. We were made to give you glory, Lord God Almighty. Thank you so much for this time. It is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. For this Savior King who was born came that we might be redeemed by your blood and by your sacrifice. This is the crux of our faith, Lord God Almighty, that without Christmas we have no reconciliation with the Father. Without Christmas we don't have the cross. Thank you for coming on our behalf. We join, we join with the angels and say glory. sacrifice. Thank you for what this season means. I pray that anybody watching or joining with us online would experience your grace and your mercy in their life. That Lord, for those who do not know you, they would begin to feel your embrace and you pulling them towards yourself, oh God. Well, Lord, we cannot come to you unless the Holy Spirit draws us. And I thank you that right now, Holy Spirit, you're drawing somebody close to your side. So Lord, in this season, may we experience and celebrate and publicize your mercy, your love, and your grace. It's in Jesus' name we are praised and worship, and all God's people said, Amen. We love you, Mavuno, and God loves you. Happy Holidays. What's up, Mavuno Church fam and anyone joining us today? I want to welcome you to the first Sunday of December. Hey. Yes! <laughs> My name is Kevin Kilonzi. I'm, a, I'm one of the pastors in Mavuno Church. I currently serve as the lead pastor of Mavuno Church downtown campus, but I'm also an executive pastor in charge of youth, college, and teens ministry. I am super glad to Pastor Emma and Pastor Carol for giving me this opportunity to share with us through this month of December. I'm looking forward to having an amazing time with all of us. But 
I us. ain't going to be doing hey. this alone. Hey. We are switching things up. Come, Come on, on guys. Come on, Pastor <laughs> I'll be doing this series uh, with this amazing group of people. Uh, they are absolutely awesome. Let me tell you guys, Africa is becoming of age. And I truly believe that we need spiritual leaders who will usher the continent into the space that God wants it to, be, to go. The, it's God-given destiny. And so I'm so sure that these guys are at the center of what God is doing in our nation and in Amen. our country. Yes. Oh, come on, people. Amen. And so on my far right. On your far right. So, so the, my far right is this one. Oh, so my far left. <laughs> <laughs> we have Pastor Zedi. Pastor Zedi together with her amazing hum, husband, Pastor Vic, uh, lead the Mavuno Connect, yeah. uh, which meets somewhere on the Siokimau. North, yeah, northwest side of Nairobi, northwest. somewhere in uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, Siokimau. Yes. Uh, and then we have Pastor B. Uh, Pastor B is, uh, hey, this guy, oh, watch Pastor this B. space, cram that name. Uh, you know, like him on his Twitter page, whatever, uh, because he's going to be a great pastor. He's, he's one of the pastors at Mavuno Mashariki. And then, of course, Patsu. Uh, if the Queen of Sheba were Ish. today, Ish. I'm telling you, I'm seated right next Come to on. her. Come on now. <laughs> so this is Patsu, an amazing uh, emerging leader uh, in our church. And so we, I'm glad that you guys are here, that we're going to be doing this together. So guys, can you believe it's the fourth Sunday of December? I mean, the fourth of December. Imagine. Oh. Imagine. Come on. Has gone so You've fast. even gone to the I know, fourth I've already week. gone. <laughs> yeah. December 4th. The year just went like that. December. I know, yeah. We are done. Uh -huh. We are now at the end of the year. Looking forward to so many gifts. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I mean, the year just started and then boom. Before, before you could know it, the year has ended. And of course, you know, a new month uh, in Mavuno Church means a new series. Uh, we're going to be looking deeper into the Christmas story. Now, Christmas is a weird season because it's, it's a, there's, there's a duality to it. There's a, there's, there, there, there is a dichotomy to it. Uh, Pastor B, uh, dichotomy is when... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And so, <laughs> and I say that because on one side, Christmas is filled with hope, dreams, excitement, aspiration. It's like an exciting season. And then on the other side, there, there, there is evaluation and which comes with questions, anxiety, and pain. Hopes, dreams, and excitement because, you know, it's at the end of the year. Uh, you know, people are in a festive mood. Yeah. Uh, uh, you want to spend. People have been saving for spending. Mm. There's gift giving and all that. But then on the other hand, you know, there's a contemplation because, you know, you're evaluating the year and you're like, the, the, it can lead to pain. Yeah. Maybe you lost a loved one through the year. And so Christmas is a reminder that they're not there with you. Uh, maybe you didn't see God's provision. And not only that, you lost your job. Uh, maybe you fought with your spouse and lost a marriage. Maybe you struggled having a child, and not only that, your reproductive health is in the line too because, you know, cancer, tumor, stuff is happening. Maybe you prayed for a breakthrough and it didn't come. Maybe you prayed for healing and it didn't happen. You prayed for a spouse, and, you know, no one asked you out. Um, in fact, I remember someone who was saying, Hey, Pasi, it's been so hard. Even when I walk in town, even the conductors don't tell me. Kss, kss. They don't even oh. call me. Into, I know. <laughs> it was like, I wish one of them would just tell me, kss, kss, oh, tie I your know. shoes, like something. <laughs> but no one, no, even no one is telling you to tie your shoes, nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, 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 you, you prayed for exams, but you know, you didn't even, you couldn't even sit for them because you didn't have school fees. Yeah. And so there's that duality in the Christmas season. Uh, but but uh, and mixed reactions and all. But I want to know uh, for you, what does the Christmas season or the festive season represent for you? What does it remind you of when you think about Christmas? Come on, Pastor B. Wow. When I, every time I think about Christmas, it takes me back when we were still very young. I know I'm still young. But yeah, I know. I know. Much <laughs> uh, well, whenever we thought about Christmas, all we could think of were the gifts mm. our parents could, uh, come on, you know, bring for us. The clothes, you know, Christmas comes with the new clothes. Christmas comes with the new shoes. So for me, Christmas was this um, awesome experience where we get gifts, where we, 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 we are just shown love come materially. On. Come on, yeah. come on. That's true, man. I mean, parents would refuse to buy you anything else yeah. through the year. They only buy you oversized <laughs> school clothes. Uh, but then December, December, you know, <laughs> you go with, uh, with uh, some new clothes. Eh, Pastor Zedi? Um, for me, it actually reminds me of... Uh, the days where I would go to up country, mm. Usha go and hang out with my grandma. Should slaughter a cow for us, you know. Wow, you are that many. Imagine, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so I think now it's quite different because she passed on. Oh, so right sorry. now it's a different ball game. But I realized I'm carrying on the culture because now I want to take my children 
where my parents are. Come on. Only that they can't slaughter a goat they, they or go a for cow, the chicken. <laughs> they go for the chicken and the turkey. Yeah. Wow. All right. What about you, Pat? Uh, for me also, um, growing up, it was just this season you would look up to um, from TV. There's the commercials of Christmas singing everywhere. Then you just know there's going to be plenty of food. You're going to see those uncles you've not seen in a long time. For sure, your parents are going to buy you oversized shoes <laughs> or clothes yeah. that you're supposed to walk in till the next year ends. But also, um, as I have grown up, I think in 2019, when everyone traveled and just went to Shags, I, w- I was left alone because of work. So I was at the house alone and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I just sat down and I was reflecting and I cried. I was literally crying and I was like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I was just reflecting on why did Jesus yeah, I mean, die for me? Women never know why they're crying. You know, it's, I mean, <laughs> wow. I'm kidding, wow. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so I was just crying, then I was reflecting and asking wow. God, really, why did Jesus die for me? In, in fact, why am I even supposed to be celebrating Christmas? Wow. I don't understand why. Mm. So it was a mixture of both emotions. So reflection, deep yeah. reflection, deep joy happens uh, in the Christmas story. For me, I think I relate with Pastor B. Uh, Christmas for me is a time of receiving gifts, being given gifts, giving gifts. Uh, I remember in, uh, in our, back in the day in our Sunday school, that's the day the teachers will give you sweets and then yeah. you'd hold them in your hand. <laughs> yes, there's one that was called Patko. I think it was just pure glucose compressed. Yeah. And then you'd hold it in your hand, you go play football. At some point, you open your hand, you're like, it's all oh, melted. My where did my sweet go? <laughs> <laughs> and so because you can't imagine not having the sweet to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And so that was this Christmas is for me. For many companies, it's a time for being, you know, charitable, for giving gifts, for, for being, uh, for, for, you know, looking after the less fortunate in society. And I think it's appropriate for us to, to see Christmas as a time of gift given. And for many of us, I think we can relate on that part, eh? whether it's sharing a meal, whether it's, you know, sharing memories and all that. Uh, because I truly believe that gift given in Christmas started with God the Father. Hey. Oh, come on, come on, come, come on, on, come now. on. Okay. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, you can read it for us. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, mm-hmm. and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Look at that. For wow. unto us a child is born, a son is given. Okay. And so I truly believe that God is a gift giver and gift given in Christmas started with God the Father uh, when he gave us his son. But have you ever, guys, have you ever asked yourself, why did God give his son? Tell us, why did God give his son? You know, Zedi, I thought you'd never Tell ask me. that question. I, I was really hoping someone asks me. Thanks so someone asked me, ask me, why ask me? Okay, we are Otherwise, asking, I can't say it. We are asking again, why? <laughs> why did God give why? us his son? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, think about it. Um, to understand why God had to give his son, we sort of have to go back all the way to the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. So God decides, God has made, you know, creation. He has made trees, has made the, what, he's made the earth and, and, and everything. And then he makes a crown jewel. He makes a human beings, man and woman, places them in the garden. And, and he gives a reason why he did so. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Pastor Zed, you can read for us. Yeah, be fruitful and increase. In number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Yes, so Genesis 1.28 actually, he says, uh, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it. And so God creates man and immediately he gives purpose. And the purpose comes in form of a blessing to be fruitful, to increase the number, to fill the earth, to subdue it. When you read the NKJV, it says to have dominion, like dominate. Mm. Oh, live have dominion. dominate. <laughs> like it's, it's actually a reality. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to, to be doing. Mm. And so man has been created. He's been given the capacity to dominate, but he was not to do it as a robot. And so mm. God gives a choice. We need to understand that God is love. And love demands a choice. Hey, come hey. on. Hey. Can you repeat I'm telling that again? You, come God on. is love uh-huh. and love demands a choice. If, wow. If, wow. if my wife was the only woman mm-hmm. and I get married to her, yeah. even her, she's like, are you really sure? Mm. But, but if there are other women, hey. Hey. of which there were, come uh-huh. on. 
and I choose her. Yes. Babe, I want to live the rest of my hey, life with you. Where is she? Friends, that is called love. That is love. Come on. That's why it's love, because there is a choice. I choose that. Now, here's, uh, it may be hard, but let me say this. When you love without choice, it's called rape. Hey. Hey. I'm telling you. Because it's someone saying, I love you. You're like, I don't love you. But then they, they force themselves. So it, it's, it's called rape. But God oh. wouldn't do that. God, God wanted to give people a choice. And so the choice came in form of a tree. Now, here's a fun fact, guys. How many trees were in the middle of the garden? Now, Papa Kilo. Tell us. <laughs> How many? Please go ahead. Please go ahead. You guys, I should be preaching with uh, you. I should be preaching. Just go ahead. <laughs> there were actually, uh, let's read actually, let's read. Genesis mm. chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Mm. Uh, Pastor B, read for us. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put man and, sorry, let me start again. Come on. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the tree of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, there in the middle of the garden were the tree of life, life. and then the tree of Good, good and evil. evil. Yes, the knowledge of, of good, good and, and evil. evil. Yeah. Then God gives a command, uh, an instruction concerning the, the tree, specifically the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, he says, you know, he commanded them that you can eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. And then, of course, you know how the story goes. Uh, Adam, and, Adam and Eve are, you know, staying with this tree. If for some point is like, yo, this is good for food, pleasing to the eyes, she takes that, eats, and then gives to the husband they, uh, who eats as well. And so out of that, the entire humanity becomes sinners. Is and that where we say curiosity killed the cat? Yes, killed the cat and kicked us out of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so all of a sudden, man are born sinners. And so everyone who's born out of Adam and Eve is born a sinner. Your uncle is born a sinner. Your grandma cute, but she was born a sinner. Your child is born a sinner. And it, we, you need to understand this, that man is not a sinner because he sins. Man sins because he's born a sinner. Hey. I'm telling you guys. Oh. Yeah, and I think you saying wow. that it reminds me of uh, how my child would go and uh, take uh, what you call sugar, mm. and then she lick it, and then she'll come and look at you, and you're like, "What is that on your mouth?" She's like, "I didn't eat anything. It's not me." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Zedi, did you need to train her to do that? No. Yeah, no, she's born with that capacity to do that. I didn't need to train my son how to pick a fork and to poke someone with it. I I, I didn't say, "Son, you really want to cause pain." <laughs> He does the sin because he's born a sinner. And so, and so, track with me, guys. God has made man. He's given them purpose. Mm. And then he's given them choice. Man has chosen to walk away from God's purpose. And he's, he's committed that sin. And so what God does is that he drives man out of the Garden of Eden. He removes him from his presence. Mm. Many people think that God did that because he hated man. But I actually believe that God did that because he had grace he had mercy for wow. the people he had created. Wow. Actually, wow. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 says, And the Lord said, The man has now become like one of us, mm. knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. And so God was like, This man has sinned. Mm. If he now eats from the tree of life, yeah. he will live forever condemned. Mm. He will live forever in his fallen state. Mm. He will live forever away from my presence. Yeah. He will live forever. And so he's like, it's an act of mercy. He says, let me remove him from the garden. Otherwise, if he eats from the tree, you can imagine. Sin uh, or, or, you know, walking away from God is what brought diseases, what brought sickness, what brought death. It's what brought all those things. But you can imagine growing old, but you can't die. Imagine. You have a disease, wow. but you can't die because mm. you ate from... Because wow. the, the fall came, came with all that. But then if we ate from the tree of life, we'd have lived forever without mm. dying. It was an act of God's grace. It was an act of God's mercy that he said, yeah. let me remove man from the mm. garden. Yeah. Otherwise, 
If he eats from the tree of life, mm. they're going to live forever in their fallen state. Yes. Let me tell you guys, we are meant for eternity, we are meant for purpose, but purpose and eternity were never meant to be enjoyed in our fallen state. Hey. Come on. Come on. Hey. Can I go on preaching? Please. Please. Can Please. I say? Can, can I? Please. <laughs> Please. Yeah, eternity and purpose were never meant to be enjoyed mm. in our fallen state. Mm. And so, what is God now going to do? Man has fallen, he has had to drive him out. So what is he going to do to restore mm. the relationship he had with man back to himself? Mm. When humanity was at its lowest, let me tell you this. When humanity was at its lowest, mm. God was thinking of a way out for us. Wow. Mm. Wow. And I say that, that because so deep. we need to understand that Adam and Eve were the best that humanity could offer. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes people say, ah, if I was in the garden, I would not have eaten. I'm like, you. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, you have generational curses. Yeah. yeah. You know, like your mm. grandmother, you are, your grandfather yeah, did what? True. Those yeah. guys didn't have that. Yeah. You have relational baggage. Mm. Adam was, you know, uh, Eve's first guy. And mm. Eve was... Ad Adam's first there was guy. no character development. No, we they were, were developed. Crying. You don't know why we are crying. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you are crying. You don't know why you are crying. The guys didn't have relational issues. Like, it's not like Eve came, ah, he, you know, mm. Adam, I saw you looking at the apple funny. No. Mm. Like, there was no other person to compare yeah. themselves with. Yeah. Yeah. They were the best that humanity could offer, mm -hmm. and they fell. So how was God going to do to restore? I want mm. to say this, that... God's grace activated a plan. Wow. Wow. What is grace? It's an unmerited, undeserved, and un favor freely given by God. Wow. God activated favor. God activated mm. a plan. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and you need to see, I'm, I'm still answering the question. Which, which question am I answering? Why mm. Jesus came. Yes. Why Jesus? I'm still answering that question. Mm. So God activated a plan. And there's no other way that man could have resto been restored back to God apart from Jesus. Why? A perfect world couldn't do it. Why? The, the Garden of we Eden was the there. Fruit. Yeah, Garden of Eden was there. And the condition of man was internal. So yeah. a perfect world couldn't do it. Sometimes people say, I want to move away and just start over again in a, in a perfect world. A perfect world won't save your condition. Mm. In fact, starting over won't, start, won't save your condition. Why? Yeah. Uh, in the times of Noah. Yeah. No, Abraham. Yeah. yeah, God started over again with Noah, mm. but starting over didn't, didn't help, help the condition of yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even family, you've said Abraham. Mm. Abraham was symbolizing family, but even that family outside of the blood of Jesus couldn't save humanity. Yeah. Wow. In fact, sometimes the things that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were doing in their family were mm. more messed up than the things that the world was doing. Mm. Yeah. A mm. bunch of rules couldn't help us. No one could keep the commandments. A system of governance couldn't help us. You know, the, the kings and judges, uh, they failed to redeem the condition of man. A, a religious system couldn't help. Mm. You know, we killed the prophets and we sent away the apostles. Yeah, a time out couldn't work for us. Mm. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, God gave us time out for 400 years. It was like, you know, guys, <laughs> you might need to sit at the Just corner, think there. about your issues. Yeah. Couldn't help. Mm. And so what was God to do to intervene in the condition of man? How was, we, how was our relationship going to be restored again? The Bible says this in John 3.16. Oh, come on, somebody hey. say it for me. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Come on, that's it. God was like, there is no other way. Perfect world, starting over, nothing. The only way it would work is let me give you my son. And so God sent his son. God pulled off Christmas so that oh. it could ultimately pull off Easter. Come, Come on, on, guys. Wow. It was an act of grace on God's part. Mm. Christmas didn't happen because any one of us was praying and fasting. Mm. The baby in the manger was not a result of man's goodness. Jesus pulled off Christmas because of grace, the unmerited, mm. undeserved, and wow. earned favor Give from God. God. Wow. Mm. In the fullness of time, just came forth, was born of the Virgin Mary, all that was amazing grace uh, uh, from the heart of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You create people. You give them option. You give them a perfect world. They listen to your enemy. For their own sake, you drive them from the garden. Mm -hmm. they, they, and they keep on running away from you. They keep running away from you. And then ultimately you said, for your sake, mm -hmm. I'm going to kill my son. What manner of no. grace is that? Like, it's Ooh, like my neighborhood. Yeah. Like, like, I, I go to my neighbor, oh, you're unable to pay rent. Mm. Okay, let me take my son to slavery so that they can pay your rent. Imagine. What manner of grace wow. is that? Romans 5, 8 says this, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
while we are still sinners, Christ died for, for us. us. Wow. Jesus didn't die for his own sin. He died for you and I. What manner of grace was that? Mm. Man's fallen condition could not be redeemed through any other way apart from the blood of Jesus. And so listen, guys. Mm -hmm. Jesus was born so that he could die. What a, what a shock. shock. What a shock. <laughs> Come on. Wow. Christmas wow. was necessary so that Easter could happen. And that's why I truly believe mm -hmm. that, the, listen to this, mm -hmm. the real Christmas tree is the cross. Hey. Hey. What a <laughs> shock. Hey. Let's finish the sermon. <laughs> I know. Let me finish this sermon. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, why would God do it to people who didn't deserve it? Yeah. You and I know we are messed up. You mm -hmm. and I know that we fall short of God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. It was one word, G-R-A-C-E, undeserved, un un unmerited, unmerited favor, favor, of of God. God. Mm -hmm. favor of God. Favor of God, favor of God. Favor checked in when humanity was at its lowest and wouldn't let go. And for generations, God was activating the plan to bring his son to wow. restore the broken relationship that was there between us and God. Throughout... Wow. The, 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 the globe of human history, God's hand was at work to make mm. everything come into perfect mm. plan. Without grace, there is no Christmas. Yeah. Without grace, there is no Christmas. So what must you do to receive this gracious gift of God this Christmas? I think for me, it's to receive it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just yeah. receive it. Yeah. yeah. Receive the gift. Receive the gift. Mm. Receive the gift. The only thing you do for a gift to become yours is to receive it. Come yeah. on. It is mm. not a reward of good behavior. True. So that you must do the good behavior to get the reward. Mm. It's not a present because you know of something you've done or not done. Yeah. It is not a payment of something you've done. Mm. It is a gift. Mm. And the only thing you do for a gift to become yours is to receive it. Come on, Pastor B. Yeah, Pastor Kilo. Which makes me think mm. when I'm, I'm given a gift, it is, no, it's, it is not mine until I receive it. Ah. Bra. Mm. Come on, brother. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you can bring it with my name, mm. with yeah. my, phone, my telephone number. It can have even it, my your address, address. Yeah, everything. Address to, you know, CO and it's yeah. still you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if I don't receive it, it is not mine. Come wow. on. Come on. Until I receive it, it is, it, it is not my gift. It's addressed mm. to you, mm. but it ain't yours. Yeah. And so, so the only received. thing you do to receive the gift of God is to actually do that. Accept it. Yeah. Receive it. Mm. John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 says, Yet to all those who received him, to all those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Children born not out of natural descent or of natural decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Wow. And so if you're there, I, I want you to, to, to tune out the noises this Christmas. Mm. Tune out the voices this Christmas and some of focus on God and say, I want to receive this free gift of God. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be drinking parties. There are people will be spending too much money this season. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, you'll be broke. Broke in your body, broke in your finances, broke in your spirit. Yeah. Broken uh, six pack. I, I know, broke, <laughs> broken six Come pack, on. you know. Uh, wow. <laughs> all your six, six packs will be in one pack. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we've commercialized and, and secularized Christmas so much. That is so hard for us to see the gift of God uh, that, that comes through the season of Christmas. And it's not just now. Even in the very first Christmas, you know, no one could give Jesus, you know, a room. There was no room in the inn for him. And I truly believe even today there's no room in our hearts for him because we've cluttered it with every other thing apart from accepting the free gift of, of, of God. And so uh, uh, um, it's not enough for you to know that God created you to have dominion. It's not enough for you to know uh, that you're fallen short of God's glory and that you're a sinner. It's not enough for you to know that God has provided a way out for you. You need to make the decision today, a conscious, practical decision, active decision rather, of accepting the free gift of God into your life. Come, Come on. Yeah. Come on. Pastor, before we finish, yep. um, in the verse that we've just read, John 1, 12 to 13, mm. yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So here, the first thing to do is receive him. Come on. But come on. if you also do not believe in him, mm. you will not receive. Yeah. As you we were saying, when growing up still now, Christmas is commercialized. True. And what we are told or what we are made to believe is Santa will come. Mm. He will jump through the chimney. Come on. And he will bring a gift. Wow. He will leave it mm. by the chimney. So yeah. what you do is you wake up and you receive your gift. Yeah. But what 
we do not receive is Jesus Christ himself. Wow. wow. Yet Christmas is us celebrating him for dying for our sins. True. For right. us to be reconciled back to God. True. So the first thing we all need to do, you at home, you watching us, you who wants to go celebrate Christmas by buying everyone, whatever it is you're buying for them, the first thing you all need to do is believe in Christ and receive him. Wow. Come on. Yeah. Receive yeah. the gracious yeah. gift of God. Uh, Pastor Zedi, what are you hearing? Pastor B, what are you hearing? Um, I think for me, uh, this someone will actually speak to many people because the way you are saying, for most of us, Christmas is just about eating, spending time with family, doing all those things. But we've never sat down to think that it's a time to receive mm. God. You know, he gave mm. so much for us. Wow. So why don't we receive? Come on. Yeah. What's a B? Well, what I'm hearing is um, for someone who is out there who has not re received Jesus Christ, this could be, this actually is the best gift you could ever receive. Mm. The, the salvation uh, that comes with uh, the name of Jesus Christ. Why can't you actually just lead someone who's there to yeah. receive Jesus? Very true. Yeah. yeah. If you are there, you have not received Jesus yet in your life, I'll invite you so that we can make this prayer and receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior in your life. Because you have been told in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13, yet to all who receive him, to those who believe, believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. I mean, you and Jesus are brothers. Like, Come on. You, can, you, you know how we, I'm called Brian Okoto Wino. Owino mm. is my dad. Mm. Now, this means that God is, you, you, you inherit the name of God wow. as your third name. Wow. Uh, you might be Patricia Suzanne, God. Mm. How awesome <laughs> is that? I mean, wow. can, can, I, can we just pray together? Come on, go for, for it. For that lady, for that guy, for that child who's um, ready to receive Jesus Christ right now. Mighty Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of Holy Spirit, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave your son as a gift, a king of glory. You sacrificed your son, Lord God, so that we may we might enjoy eternal life. And mighty Father, Lord, it just hits us that no other gift is as perfect as that gift, that King of glory, you, sovereign Lord, giving your son, mighty Father, because of your love you have for us. And this day, Lord God, we come to get together, mighty Father, Lord, repenting for um, the sins that we have done, mighty Father, repenting for not receiving you, mighty Father. We've believed in many things. We believed in Santa's King of glory. But today we want to believe you, Jesus Christ. So we accept you in our lives as our Lord and Savior. May you rub our name um, from the book, King of Glory of Sinners, from the book of death. And write, us, uh, write our names in the book of life. And uh, forever we want to celebrate you and we want to, um, our lives to rotate around you, mighty hour. In Jesus' name we do pray, trust and believe. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Patu, I want to ask you to pray for people who are giving thanks to God uh, for this year. You know, God has been faithful. God has shown up. They've experienced the grace of God uh, over their lives. Could you just go ahead and just make a prayer of thanksgiving for where God came through for different people? In the spirit of prayer, I will just love us to thank God for bestowing life upon us, for giving us the people that we celebrate life with, for Him giving us testimonies to come back and testify that He was able to pay my rent. He was able to pay my fees. He was able to give me that spouse. He was able to give me salvation that I needed to walk from the life that I used to walk. So Heavenly Father, this day we just want to bless your name. We want to bless you for the spirit and the gift that you've given us of Jesus Christ. God, this morning, we just thank you for working with us through the entire year. We've come to the end of the year, God. And the best thing we could do for ourselves is receive the gift of Jesus. For us to continuously walk in a better place with you, God. For us to align ourselves with you. For us to keep receiving your love, God. So, Father, we bless you. And as we are about to celebrate Christmas, God, may we celebrate it by uplifting your name. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Yet you are not a sinner. Thank you for your blood that is able to atone for our sins. Thank you for the testimonies that we've had throughout the entire movement of Free the Future, people sacrificing themselves to give of what they owned, God. And this is just another form of love. This is how you've loved us. People were able to sacrifice the little that they had to be able to show their true love for you. So Father, we pray that you may keep blessing each and every single one of us. May we not be left behind. May we walk in your graces. May we walk in your favor. Because your grace is what saves us. So we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And then finally, uh, Pastor Zedi, let me ask you to pray for people who you've experienced a difficult year and you're saying, I, I, I need that grace of God over my life. I need to see God's grace. I need to see where God's grace is at work. I know we're going to be talking about that more on that next week. But for today, could you pray for people who are asking for God's grace over their lives? Yeah, and I think uh, what you said, it's really been uh, a long year. The way you said, the uh, year is has has come to an end so uh we really thank god for his grace and uh in that uh, let's just uh, pray uh dear gracious lord we want to thank you lord we thank you father that you are our creator and that you have chosen us to be in a relationship with you thank you jesus for extending your grace to us thank you lord because we have been saved by your grace oh god day by day oh god help us to comprehend your grace and more in our lives oh god Give us, Lord, an increase of grace today and forevermore, O oh God. Your love is just amazing, O oh God. You have loved us, O oh God, when we were un unlovable. You have been so amazing. You have been great, O oh God. You have shown us grace in every step of the way, O oh God. Father, we want to thank you for this year that has been, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for just being with each and every one of us, O oh God. Father, even as we come to the end of the year, O oh God, give us wisdom. Give us gentleness, O oh Lord on how we interact with other people and what we tell them, oh God. May we have the heart to teach them of your grace, to show them what you can do, oh God. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you and we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. That's it for today. We are glad that you've been here. We're glad that you've enjoyed the time together with us. Uh, until next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>